I'm Rachel Edden. And I'm Miles Stokes. And we are the co-hosts of Rachel and Miles Explain the X-Men, a weekly podcast where we walk listeners through the ins, outs, and retcons of our favorite superhero soap opera. We're also the co-hosts of Rachel and Miles Review the X-Men. Which and... you're watching right now. Hi, so normally we just post outtakes to the Backstage blog, but um, this has been a really, really intense week as far as reviews. We had eight books and we're doing it, you know, at 11.30 or midnight after a play and we're kind of wiped out and we actually got to them really fast and we thought it might be a good week to talk a little bit about the process and how we do the video reviews. Yeah, so we basically read all the issues as quickly as we can after they come out. Like I pick them up from the store on Wednesdays, I read them during my lunch break, upload them immediately to, Mar to our Marvel Digital account so Rachel can read them. On my laptop, which sucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, then on Thursday, uh, when I get home and we've had a chance to have two days to go through both of them, uh, we talk, we divide them up, you know, mm -hmm. whoever has stronger opinions about an issue usually gets it, or if one of us has done a lot of one title for a while, the other one will jump in. Yeah, or if there's a title that one of us really likes, or if there's a title that one of us just has more to say about. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm sure you've noticed, we usually have one of us lead pretty strongly on an issue, although the other does jump in. Um, as far as issue of the week and panel of the week, those are generally pretty collaborative. Like, we'll, uh, often we have mm -hmm. the same opinions, at least on issue of the week. Panel of the week tends to vary a lot more, so we kind of take turns on who gets their choice. And when we disagree, usually one of us feels a lot more strongly about it than the mm -hmm. other, so that we've, I mean, I think we've done a couple where they've, where we've, we've just not been able to come to a consensus, so we've done two. Yeah, it happens. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's also been interesting especially for me because like Rachel you're a professional critic and I'm I, I fix computers for a living so I'm kind of not but it's been interesting kind of uh, learning basically what it means to review something rather than just say recapping it or just saying mm -hmm. the feels it gave me like you know talking about the content what works what doesn't I've actually learned a whole lot from you in that regard well, thank you I think actually that what you do is much less of a liability than how nice you are um, <laughs> no because you grade everything on an effort scale normally like, I just you know Miles people try Kind of critical things about comics is has been one of the more difficult points to get to with this series and the idea that we are we're not just recapping them we are reviewing them and so we can't just we can't you know ethically or usefully be unambiguously positive the, I think that's been a steep learning curve for you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's especially the case because as we've met a few creators and as mm -hmm. even just, you know, having read a bunch of interviews, almost everybody who's working on X-Men right now is a really just genuinely nice, good human being. And so I know they're also really trying yeah. their hardest. So when an issue does fall flat, it's hard to basically say that rather than finding the parts I did like. Because there's always something to like, you know? And, you know, that's kind of the fundamental dilemma of comics journalism and reviewing there, too, which is that the industry is so small and there's so much overlap between journalists and critics and creators that the people you're reviewing and criticizing are inevitably the people you drink with. Mm-hmm. Totally. But, you know, I mean, I, I like to think we're being relatively fair and, cer and, and not overly harsh, even when we don't like something. You know, I will say... I am coming at this much, much more in the tone of the podcast and who I am as, as part of the podcast and as, as a fan and commentator than I am as I would if I were reviewing this in text. Um, I would probably be much harsher and I'd definitely be much more craft focused. We pay a lot more attention to story here because that's mm -hmm. what the focus of Rachel and Miles Explain the X-Men has historically been. Oh, yeah. When I've gone into the craft stuff, it's been in, in separate text articles on the site. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, this started as just a, a random Patreon goal that initially we kind of really regretted because, to be honest, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's us reading yeah. comics very quickly. Um, but and neither of us had ever really done any video before. And it was yeah, we're really brand scary. new at this stuff, seriously. Like, at this point, the sunglasses are a fixture, but they were literally, I mean, they were the product of a late night Twitter panic attack and me trying to think of ways to make video less terrifying was, you know, well, what if I just wore sunglasses all the time? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be funny? Wouldn't that be ridiculous? And now it's like podcast canon that I always wear sunglasses. Spoiler, I have seen her <laughs> eyes at least twice in the so 10 years So has everyone learned the Patreon video. Just the eyes floating. I was wearing my normal glasses. I don't even, I don't even actually wear sunglasses. That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, so we're, we're, we're having fun doing these. Um, hopefully you guys are, are having fun watching them. I mean, I, in theory, they have some merit independent from the podcast. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing it, keep watching, and thank you.